What is the difference between an exercise and a problem? An exercise is a question for which you immediately know what technique to use to get to the answer. Here is an exercise. Compute 823 times 536 times 38 times 107. If you know how to multiply whole numbers, you just have to mechanically follow those steps to compute the answer for this exercise. It may take you a long time and you may make mistakes along the way, but there is no mystery about the method or technique you have to follow that leads you to the solution. It's a lot like exercising in a gym. If you run on a treadmill, you just have to move your legs in a very predictable, repetitive way. If you can regularly do so, you'll improve your health. But many people find it very boring to spend a lot of time doing repetitive exercises at a gym, which is why they need to have an iPod or something to avoid the boredom, if at all they manage to go to the gym regularly. Similarly, many people develop an aversion to mathematics because of the numerous exercises that they are made to do all the time. A problem is different from an exercise. A problem is a question for which you have no idea, at least at the beginning, what technique or method to use to get to the answer. A good problem will pose a question that captures your interest and it will usually have an element of mystery because the method to solve it will not at all be clear at the beginning. Mathematical exercises are often likened to gym exercises as I mentioned. Mathematical problems are likened often to hiking in an unknown terrain. There is an element of mystery in hiking. You have no idea what you will encounter as you explore. You might get dirty, you might encounter dead ends, you might encounter unsurmountable barriers, you might get lost, you might have to turn around or backtrack many times. But the exploration and investigation is something that you can do for hours or even days because it's much more fun than doing repetitive walking or running on a treadmill. One of the important skills that problem solvers need to cultivate is to spend a sufficient amount of time investigating the problem, trying different strategies, different approaches, without giving up. You should not give up just because you feel lost. Many students think about problems for a small amount of time and then they give up. That's not a problem solver's mentality. Just like a hiker or an explorer will put in sustained effort over hours or days to explore the terrain, as problem solvers, you have to learn to keep exploring the mathematical terrain without giving up. In fact, good problem solvers will not like to be told the solution to a problem. They will want to discover the solution themselves. Otherwise, they won't feel satisfied. I can give a personal analogy here. In my school days in India, I used to be an avid bird watcher. I would love to explore the wilderness with my binoculars to search out interesting species of birds. Doing that on my own used to be a source of great pleasure to me. But there was no pleasure in going to a zoo and being able to see even the most exotic birds because they would all be caged. Where is the element of discovery? Where is the joy of exploration or discovery when someone else has captured the bird put it in a cage and confined it artificially inside a zoo and written its name on a nameplate displayed outside the cage for you to read. Similarly, solving problems on your own leads to a satisfaction that you won't get if you just look up answers or solutions without trying to solve the problem for a sustained length of time yourself. Anyway, so I mentioned three ways in which our mathematics instruction is different from regular school instruction. 
an emphasis on history and philosophy, games and puzzles, and problem solving. It will take us a few weeks before we can settle on a good way to incorporate all three of these in our sessions since we are doing this online. For today, I was wondering what to do because I don't know any of you yet and I'm not familiar with the kind of mathematical background from which you're coming, all the more so because you're a mixed age group. So I decided that I will start by assuming very little. I will only assume that you know how to add, subtract, multiply and divide whole numbers. I'm sure you know much more than that, but I'm assuming only this much for now. So I decided to start by introducing you to a type of mathematical puzzle called a cryptarithm. A cryptarithm is a problem. It's not an exercise. There's no mechanical way to solve a cryptarithm, although there are certainly some strategies, some common strategies that you can predictably use to make progress in solving cryptarithms. So solving cryptarithms should be more interesting for you than solving arithmetic exercises. You need to think when working on cryptarithms. You cannot solve those questions while being on autopilot. So some of the cryptarithms we'll see are drawn from the mathematical Olympiad for elementary and middle school kids.